This is the 16th video of the Wargaming of Wargame Design Studios Battle of the Bulge, otherwise known as Hitler's 1944 Ardennes Offensive. This is the third series, and in this one I'm playing the Germans, and the game's artificial intelligence is playing the Allies. <coughs> It is December 16th, 1944, 1800 hours, which means 6 p.m. Turn 7 out of 198, snow conditions prevail, and it is night. And it is the access movement phase. I believe I've done all this. Oh, I guess not. No, I haven't done this. I think I've done this. Yeah. Okay, everything, oop, 52, 57, this hasn't moved, no, <coughs> this hasn't moved. And I don't believe any of this has moved. Okay. See what we can get across here. Deploy him. Deploy him. Get a lot of anti tank across. Deploy him. Jeez, a lot of armor across there. I don't think I can fit any more in, but let's see. Scout car. Yeah. Deploy him. Infantry won't go. That's all that'll fit. See if these guys will go next turn. Meanwhile, move up some more armor. Next turn, I'll start to spread out. One disordered shit he had too. One recovered it looks like. Okay. I knew those guys would be creeping up. Go 
on here with some boys. What's his range? Thirteen, Jesus. What does it take a whole friggin' turn to set a, a homo up? This is why we put all of our armor up front to hold the bridgehead. Nobody can get on that hex. Oh shit, I got an 88 up there finally. Let's see how close it can get. God damn, 88. That fucker won't move past that village. They're friggin' worthless. Mines. Oh, that's why I want to move. Huh. I should have remembered that. This 88 won't have to go the same way. God damn it, I don't want to grab these two fuckers. I gotta start swear, stop swearing. Holy shit, we loaded up that hex. Okay. Ends our headquarters. Come on, I can't even dump that guy there. Well, now we're getting kind of the crap on the road. Might as well move them up before these panzers get here. Oh, what do we got up here? These guys have moved. Yeah, I th 
thought I'd find somebody there. Let's close in that guy. Why do they always have to stop in the damn village? I mean, what is so amazing in there? Ooh. It's not good. I gotta sacrifice my infantry because the goddamned armor was in the back of my army. Okay, let's deploy him. Move this guy up. Jeez, this guy's in. Travel mode, they can only move one hex. What kind of travel mode is that? Okay, we got our fearless 5th Army Command, oh, 57, oh, well, what is it, no, 5th Army Commander, who the hell is that, Montufel, yeah, we have an 88 up here too, okay, Montufel, here in the 88 we'll go in the fort and deploy The bastard can't deploy. Christ. Well, that was the 150 that went in there. I don't want to bring the 88 on open ground. So let's see if he can go in here. And he can deploy. Good. All right. So we got all these guys all set. Oh, to bring these guys in. Boy, that armor. 
armor car really rips these guys are still fixed unbelievable some more armored cars they're pretty tough too to take out got a good defensive advantage It's always nice to have them up front, especially if they're in travel mode because they can really move around. Look at them, two more. The next game I'm going to play after this, I think I'm going to do another War Plan Pacific. Now, I had it to do with the designer of that game. And I thought he was hopeless in understanding the issue I raised. But it looks like he did something about it. So I'll have to see if he fixed everything or just one thing. While I'm moving here, I'll talk about it. Here was the problem in the game. And it wasn't... He apparently did not have a very good understanding of how island campaigns were conducted in the Pacific. Now, when I corresponded with him, he was under the impression that uh, U.S. naval bombardment was highly effective. And that, of course, is false. It was effective. It wasn't highly effective ever, but it was effective at Tarawa for the simple reason that the Japanese built their entrenchments on the beach and they were blown apart, of course, by the American bombarding fleet. After that, they quickly learned their lesson. And then, instead of building them on the beach, they built them considerably inland, usually on a mountain and inside caves and a lot of times on the reverse slope of the mountain now the only way the americans could combat that was to send out spotter planes and that was dubious because there was always a lot of battle smoke and the japanese would bring their guns out of the cave fire them wheel them back in and reload so it was very hard to bombard them and even if they did they were inside the caves they were usually invulnerable so the after Tarawa the American ship bombardment was fairly ineffective now the bombardment was integral to taking the islands for the Americans and of course it was in reality ineffective now another thing was you could build cores in the game but for some strange reason the American Marines were you could only build divisions and a division was six combat points. Now in the game, you can put a Japanese core on the arm on the um, on an island, which I think would mean 21 defensive points. So you can only have one type of unit on a hex, one naval unit one air unit 
and one ground unit. So you could only have one Marine division. So what happened is the Japanese would have a corps which outnumber you by two and a half to one. And all you could bring on there is a Marine division. And of course you got slaughtered. Now another screwy thing was once you landed, you could not re-embark. So the Marine Division was stuck there until it got killed because it couldn't get any odds for a successful attack and it couldn't withdraw. So basically, it just starved to death. And the, bombard the ship bombardment did no good at all. So you could do air bombardment, but your carriers could only remain on station for like a turn and then they had to leave. So the Japanese islands were invulnerable, according to the rules. So I told him, you can fix this by allowing the Americans to build corps, Marine Corps in the game, which historically they had, they had a Marine Corps. In fact, they might have had two of them, but I know they had one. And that would give them 18 points. Another thing I told them, and so he, he actually, I looked at yesterday, I looked at the U.S. builds, and he's still got a Marine division, but now it's worth 15 points. So it might have been too hard to reprogram the game for Marine Corps, but he did the next best thing and made the Marine Division 15, which is a lot better. It should have been 18, because it's it should have been three Marine Divisions at six each, but 15 is still a lot better than six. Now the other thing was the naval bombardment, and that's too strong in the game so I don't know if he adjusted that because it was ineffective after Tarawa so basically the Americans would get one successful naval bombardment and that's it I don't know what he did on that because I have to play the game to find out the other thing was that even at Iwo Jima, the Japanese never had one more than one division on a hex, on an island hex. And it was a reinforced division, but it was still a single division. So I told them, prohibit Japanese corps on an island, because they never did it historically. And I don't, I don't know if they had the manpower to do it. On Iwo Jima, I think the Japanese only had like 21,000 men. That was their normal division. So you shouldn't allow cores. But he did, because he, he really didn't understand naval combat. Well, na not naval combat, but island campaigns. He was really lacking in that knowledge. So he refused... He would not respond to my questions. He went off on a tangent or something. And he said, oh, you can always bombard the hex. And I said, well, that was false. So he says, oh, where's your data? So I gave him all the data. And I referenced the sources, and I had the statements. And he didn't say anything to that. So I figured it's hopeless. And I just gave up. I said, well, you know, how can you play a game in the Pacific where it's impossible to, for the Americans to take the island because I, I tried to take several islands, couldn't do it. And so I thought, well, he just doesn't know that much and he doesn't want to admit he's a goof. And so that's the end of it. So now I have to see, I have to try playing the game again and see if he's made the other changes. Because I like the game. I think it's really well done. 
except for that. And of course, that's the main thing. Well, that and carrier battles. And I, I have no objections the way he handled that. But that was my main complaint. But that's a main point of the Pacific, the island campaigns. And if you can't do them, Christ, you can't get close to Japan. So maybe he's fixed it. We'll see. Fixed one part, I think. Well, he kind of fixed it to be acceptable. So uh, I think this weekend I'll start to play it off to refresh myself on the rules. But it is, it is a nice game. I mean, it really moves fast. It gives you a good feel, except for that. That was my only complaint. And it's not a small one, to tell you the truth. So we'll see what happens. If it plays through and it looks like I'll be able to invade the islands, I'll give it another go after this one. This is going to take a a while so that's really what we wait on the road but it'll give me a chance on weekends to, to test it out and see how it works because even with the uh, marines it might be a doable because I'll have to build some subs and I'll have to blockade the islands so they kind of start starving so he'll never be able to maintain a core there because it'll be half starved and it'll be weakened. Then you might be able to do it. And I hope to hell he's allowed. See, what, what, what you have to do is it's important that you withdraw that division, be able to withdraw it. Because in one turn of combat, it's going to be shot. And you'll have to rotate another division in there. But if you can't withdraw it, the islands are invulnerable. Because he'll just sit there and the division will take, the American division will take a long time to starve. And while it's there, you can't reinvade the island again. So as long as that American division lives, the island is invulnerable, and it's up to the Japanese to make sure it doesn't die. Not He doesn't want to attack it or blockade it, because it makes the island invulnerable for him. Which, you know, just demonstrates. He didn't really understand. I mean, he understood a lot of other stuff. It's amazing he had a blind spot here about uh, the island campaigns. But it's totally blind. But he did fix it, so maybe he came to an awareness, I'm hoping. I thought my arguments were persuasive, but at the time I didn't think they were at all. But apparently they were. So we'll see what happens. I played the, your, the war plan well, they didn't say war plan Europe, but that's what it is. Just the plain war plan is war plan Europe. That's a that's a good game too. I like that. You know, if you want something that moves, it's got a fair amount of realism to it. Those are the two games you want to buy. Well, I don't know about the Pacific one yet. We'll see. I'll play through that again. But I wish she'd do a. Napoleonic one. And, well, no one else will probably pl play this, but Peloponnesian War. That would be great. I like that era. Now this one, I turned off the rule for night fatigue. 
This is the only way the Germans have a chance to, to do anything in this game. If they can move at night. So we're going to see what happens now. They are terribly handicapped by the incompetent deployment. If I could just redeploy these units, or if somebody had enough sense. I mean, they, they made like 50 scenarios here. Why didn't they make one where the Germans actually had a competent deployment? Jesus, if they had the bridge units and flak units up front, and the armor units were all released and up front, I think they could make the MERS, and that's probably why they didn't do it, because it would embarrass the U.S. Show how incompetent they were. But right off the bat, you cover the crossings with the 88s, and then you immediately start building the bridges, and then as soon as they're done, you send your armor over. That's the way it should work. I mean, isn't that uh, Blitzkrieg? You're supposed to use your armor first to punch th through. Not like Montgomery. That dope used his infantry to try to break a hole at Alamein, and he looked like a fool because he finally had to give that up and, and do it right and use his tanks. But he tried to break through with an infantry attack and then have his armor go through the hole. Well, that didn't work. Even against the Italians, it didn't work. Christ, that's saying something. Okay, all these guys have moved. Yeah, there was a total dope. He was Montgomery was really overrated. What an income pope. He he sort of won Alamein, although he outnumbered the Germans by like ten to twenty to one maybe in tanks. It still took him I don't know how many days to break through. Any income poop could have done it with what he had there, but. Then, of course, in Sicily, he gets hung up at Mount Etna. He couldn't make any headway there. And then you've got Normandy, and of course they say, well, he drew all the Germans to him. Well, he couldn't do shit about taking his objectives. He was stopped cold. And then you've got Market Garden, which was a disaster. I mean, Christ, it was one. And then you've got the Battle of the Bulge. He wanted to hang back. Finally, he was shamed into going forward. Uh, but he wanted to hang back with the whole British Army and defend the Murs River line in, inside the forts and let the Americans fight it out. What a, and, and Churchill even told Eisenhower he could sack him. And Eisenhower was a dope, too. And he didn't do it. It's like, why won't you do it? The man was a nincompoop. He was probably the best the British had. I don't know if they had any. Well, they had O'Connor. They shuffled him off to Buffalo. Crazy. With 30,000 men, uh, he beat the Italian army in Africa. And I don't know what a number, 200,000. And they shuffled him off to Asia somewhere. Christ, they should have put him in charge. British. They never deserved an empire. They were too stupid. Okay, all these guys have moved now. These guys haven't. Okay, what do we got here? We've got 88s.
I just don't like this 88 out in the open. But I can't move it. There's some more infantry. There's another 88. Oh, these guys are released now. Oh, shit. Well, we got this fiasco. All right, I better attend to this. Okay, I gotta put... These guys are weak. Shit. But I've gotta put them into travel mode to assault Clairvaux. This guy's only 85 men. This is a battalion for Christ's sake. 85 men. Jeez. Put this guy up here, put him up there. Okay, we got obstacles here. This guy apparently hasn't done shit on repairing that dam ditch we're filling in the ditch friggin idiot Oop, another guy pops up Okay, now, can these guys cross? Ten of them are clearing obstacles, for Christ's sake. And one hex. Okay, that guy can cross. And the obstacles are already cleared in this hex, and the reason you can tell, or the way you can tell, is obstacles is in upper and lower. When it's all uppercase, that means they haven't been cleared. So we'll send these engineers across. Maybe one of these bastards can clear something here. Let me send some tanks across. They're going to have to go around this friggin' ditch. Dumbass, worthless engineers. At least all the tanks get across. That's something. Okay, what do we got? In 88, let's bring them up. Panther. Are we crossing the river now? Yeah, we are. If this fucking ditch was... was filled in, we could go down the road a piece. We'll deploy an infantry here and see if that bastard can fill in the ditch. 
probably not. Okay, now let's get some 88s across. Yep, there's one. There's two. There's a tank. Wow, we're unloading. It's just too bad. Yeah, there's some glitches in this game. Okay, another tank. Oop, another 88. Get them across. Another engineer. Let's get him up there. Another anti-tank. Oh, scout cars. Scout car. Another 88. Jesus. Guys, if we ever make it to Clairvaux, I'll blast that place apart. Another 88. If we would only had these in the beginning. Flank, flak pants. Pants are they're pretty good. What the hell is this? 150 millimeter gun on a Panzer 38 check tank. Is there anything better around here? We got a Nebelwerfer. That might not be bad. Especially if he's out in the open. We'll see if we can get the flag Panzer there. No. Nope. That's as much as we can do. Okay. Well, that's our heavy-duty stuff is up there. Now it's just the normal stuff. Oh, here's a wasp. Well, they're not that hot. Homo. Jeez. Much better. Oh, the wasp isn't bad. And the advantage is the wasp doesn't need a setup. Okay. Hummel does, but we'll bring him up anyway. That's as much as he can stack up. What the hell is this all? Flack? Uh. Push us off to the side. These guys are better.
Oh, Jesus. Another 88. Hitzer. Got an eighty eight here. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. You need him up there. God damn it's that minefield. I got some fatigue on me. Well that isn't bad. One fatigue point. Okay. Fucker, move on there. Oh, he's clearing mines. the damn minefield out. Bridge units. God damn it. Well, before I can move them, I have to go down here and check things out.
Okay, that's all jammed up. See, this is a stupid thing. He just moved there. Obstacles is upper and lower means it's cleared, but he's clearing obstacles. How can that be? What happened to this guy building this bridge up here? Christ, when's he going to build it? Lazy bastard. All right. Oh, I don't see anybody there. How strange. Come go back inside here where it's nice and safe. Let's move away from this guy. Christ, these armor battalions here. Fortunately, two out of the three are disrupted. Or two out of four. We gotta disrupt the other two. Oh, what's going on down here? Let's put him in travel mode. Let's see how far he gets. Eh. Shit, farther than I thought. Disrupted. Okay. Still building. What do we got on the other side? A trench. Fuck. We'll move two engineers down in here. Plus we'll move seven, the 80th Corps. There's another bridge unit. <laughs> this bridge builder is still fixed. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, where's the bridge unit for this one? Down here? Yep. another bridge unit in 88 another 88 which as I said will do us no friggin good now because the infantry had to take all those damn positions fucking idiots but I might do something against the tanks I can still reach them let's get it deployed Let's get this bridge builder in there. And he'll back up this other bridge builder. Christ, you got to put two bridge builders in each hex because they're so worthless at doing their job. Here's another 
bridge builder let's see how far he he'll just make it to this village and he'll crap out yeah see he craps out already 88 can't do it either here's another one yeah they all crap out fuck freaking worthless Time's just about up. I think we're going to move Army Headquarters over here. Got about 10 bridge building units here. Good are they now? Well, we're 58 minutes, so I'm going to call it. As much torment as I can take this 